So, welcome to Tales Tomorrow. My name is Maro, your storyteller for today, and with me we have some more RPG horror stories. So I said I was gonna try to stream throughout this year, but it's already February. Man, the time is passing by so fast. I'm currently busy right now IRL and gotta deal with some stuff on the side, but as soon as I figure it all out, then I can come back and actually properly set up a good streaming plan for us here on Tales Tomorrow. But anyway, without further ado, let's get some RPG horror stories for today. The time I was the awful creep DM. It may be long, but I just wanted to get it out of my chest. I say that many DMs that appear in stories on this subreddit do all the horrible things they do because complete power over the game world tempts them, while they are the higher observing power. People without strong morals can fail in this. I was 14 and I was a massive fanboy of the Prince of Nothing that I recently read, like the darkest fantasy that I was able to find. I was the DM of my group, so I decided to start a dark fantasy campaign in crusader-like setting inspired by the Prince of Nothing that I and my friends homebrewed. It was a cold world, a small habitable part of which was torn between two alliances, the Holy League worshipping the lawful neutral religion, Catholic theme, and the Alliance also worshipping lawful neutral religion but Muslim theme, mainly consisting of orcs and dwarf nations. It was a game of espionage and diversion. Party was a secret mercenary group that done dirty deeds for the church. The party consisted of four or five characters, don't remember exactly. One of them was edgy elf rogue, played by older brother friend of my friend. He was 17 or 18. Over the course of the campaign, he was the agent to the Imperial Authority, the Inquisition, and the Thieves Guild at the same time. Party thought that he's a spy on the other side and were preparing to kill him, because campaign involved espionage, I was encouraging paranoia inside of party. Encouraging party paranoia? <laughs> that is mean and brutal. Good lord. Imagine if you're playing the game and suddenly have to play Among Us to find out who is the traitor. Party was investigating the Alliance agent network in a frontline area. Clues were leading to Sotinur? Sotinur? I don't know how to pronounce it. Sotinur. Of the field broth of the followed the Imperial Legion that stayed in the area. It was thought to be the liaison. Rogue was the first to look for it. He came to the camp first and found the brothel. Because of espionage nature of the campaign, I allowed some private RP in Telegram with scenes of other players should not have seen. This is one of those scenes. He asked me if he can find the boys. Later he told me that he thought that Sotenure means a male prostitute. And he was trying to find the liaison. Hey, sparked in my head. It's not any fanfic website. There are no restrictions of what I can or can't do like the freaking devil on my shoulder told it. So he is told, we have Rita, she is like the boy. I thought it would add detail to the grim world. So I explain how he enters the tent and sees 12 or 13 year old girl with a boyish haircut covering herself with blanket. He speaks to her, she answers in a tone that's supposed to be flirty, just like she was supposed to answer. He understood that he won't be able to extract information and leaves. We continue playing without mentioning what happened here, Killed the real Sotinir. Sotinir? I don't know. After some missions, campaign ended due to a scheduling issue. I once played one shot with a guy who played Rogue, but then our ways did not cross. He never mentioned what happened, neither did I. But I'm still feeling guilty when I remember this situation. Running these sort of themes, very sensitive themes, that's... It's... it's uh, it, 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 There's no proper way to do it correctly. It's just honestly one of the themes that's just best to avoid regardless. If you happen to have a party that consented to having a bit more of a grim dark thing, and you can handle scenes tastefully, and any sort of sensitive material tastefully, then I think it could work out. But yeah, it's just not a good look when you try to put like a... a 12 or 13 year old uh, in a bed in a sexual situation and stuff. It's just not a good look. It doesn't make you look good as a DM. It doesn't make the whole situation look good. Actually, in fact, I think most people would just be very grossed out and uncomfortable with this whole situation. I'm glad things didn't go in a gross situation for this sort of thing. I'm glad the player just kind of went in just to ask questions and just peaced out and left. That could have went bad. It really could have been bad. It could have went uncomfortable. It could have ruined the entire table dynamic. could have ruined the entire table atmosphere. Unless you can handle running these sort of situations tastefully, just best to avoid these sort of situations in the slightest because, because, uh, Ugh, the the uh, the outcome of running this thing and it going fail and uh, failing horribly is just uh, no 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 thank you. Anyway, I feel a little bit icky from this story. Let's get to the next story for today. Actually, I think it might be kind of icky to you. Whatever. We're preparing for cringe for today, y'all. Get your cringe hats ready. We're going in. Creepy GM and players ruin my partner's game. Content warning: in character assault, sexualization of minors, and gaslighting. Ugh, great. 
So this isn't my story. My partner played an RPG group that streams their games, not naming any names, sorry, no, sorry, and play various RPG systems. Please tell me that I didn't stream that specific content because oh my god, that'd be fucking gross. She was already in this group when we met, so I would watch their games sometimes and she would tell me about the stuff that happened each week. She is an amazing role player and her characters are really unique and deep, plus her character voices are incredible. One guy in the group, the GM, struck me as a bit of an odd in the game and almost everything was crazy sexual. Seems like most of the players were going along with it and having fun, so I thought it was a bit weird sometimes, but as long as players are okay with it, that's up to them. Turns out there was a lot of history there. Things kicked off when our partner was asked by the GM to do some art for a new game he was running. He was really proud of it being an all-female cast while he was GM. I kinda poked fun at the man in charge of an all-female game and started referring to him as women's hero. When I heard about that, why not let a woman lead the all-female game? But whatever. Then my partner showed me the character notes GM sent for the art piece and asked if I thought they were weird. Some samples. Pretty much every character is specified as being 16. Only one character described as upper 20s seasoned. GM is almost 40, I think. What do you mean? <sighs> you know what? I don't even want to ask the implication of what you mean by seasoned. One character was youthful, borderline juvenile. Form-fitting, low-cut top with a subtle view of the girls. Jeweled dress, the girls in danger of falling out. Hair tied up like she is on the weekends. Uh, <laughs> I need a bath. I'm gonna take a bath. This is just too, this is too much cringe to handle. I, I need a bath. These characters, as the GM requested, are supposed to be 16. 16 minors. This is fucking gross. What is going on with this fucking guy? What is wrong with him? Like, listen, if you want to sexualize an NPC, whether it be a guy, girl, whoever, then at least make him old enough to be sexualized so it doesn't feel fucking weird or creepy. If you want to give an adult character a little bit of under cleavage or a dress that's more like, you know, so loose you think the girls are going to pop out, whatever. Do whatever you want. If they're adult characters, then it's fine whatever but if they're like minors and stuff that feels so fucking gross and achy why are you even talking about this sort of things why are you talking about as 16 year olds girls in the first place it just feels fucking weird you could just if you didn't want to make it weird you could just make them 18 at least at least 18 if not on the 20s now i'm starting to see the problem with this guy wanted to run an all-female cast he just wants to have his own harem game he wants to have his own sexual harem game basically with 16 year olds oh god that is actually fucking rancid now again i'm not too into thirsty stuff in RPGs. Some romance and flirting is fine if players initiate it, in my opinion. So I feel it's a little weird already. None of the descriptions really went into who the character was or the backstory for flavor. It was all just about their outfits and physical appearance. The fact that this is an all-female game and most of the characters are in high school made this even weirder. My partner says she agrees and that now she's remembering more stuff he did. He showed me a recording of one session with a female player that went roughly like this. The fact that they stream this sort of thing, like that's immediately just incriminating themselves. Well, imagine they have a lot of these gross stuff just straight up archived on a Twitch channel somewhere. What the hell? Better go clip in and like report it somewhere. Report it to Twitch admins or wh wh whichever platform they're streaming on. Also, I get for like art, you're supposed to describe the physical appearance so that the artist is able to like convey them and stuff, but it just feels really weird when you specifically talk about the 16 year old's breasts and how they're supposed to be drawn as if they're almost falling out. It's really weird. Artists don't need to know that sort of thing. They need to know the hair color, the hairstyle, jewelry, clothing, pose, you know, the general descriptors, not talk about how the girls are ready to pop out of a 16 year old, that's fucking weird, man. Context. There was some magic water or something around the player, controlled by a deity. One thing runs through your mind, which is, you want this. Then the water surrounds you and starts pushing in, suffocating you, entering every single one of your orifices. <laughs> I can't believe I read that. I'm gonna choose the voice for this because that sounds like a perfect gross DM voice. But dude, what the f this DM is way too kinky. Jesus Christ. The player seems to be shocked and a little uncomfortable, but roll with it and kept playing. That's definitely creepy to me, especially the you burn this part. But then my partner told me that GM basically forced her, my partner's character, into sex in one of their campaigns. 
and also kissed her character forcefully in a later session. She showed me the clips of both. Also, multiple other players have brought up GM saying weird things in person and on calls, but people are afraid to bring it up outside of private conversations. You know how you do that? You take the clips, take the amount of evidence, report it to the admins for whatever platform they're streaming on, and then you sit down with everybody and say, DM, fuck right off. This shit is not cool. We're not comfortable with it. If you're not gonna tone down this nonsense, we're not playing your fucking campaign. Get the fuck out of here. Or, you know, hey, here's the thing. If all of you feel uncomfortable, Drop the DM. Drop the DM like the garbage that he is and just find a new DM. Find you guys are, have a better time finding a new DM or having one of y'all DM instead of having this garbage of a DM go through with this weird, kinky, sexualized stuff. There's nothing wrong with having intimacy in some of the sexual themes and games as long as that's tasteful and as long as the players consent to this sort of thing. If everybody's uncomfortable with this sort of things, they're just collecting mounts of clips of weird problem DM behavior, then nobody is comfortable with that. Clearly, nobody is comfortable with Nobody's vibing with this sort of thing if everybody's having a problem with the DM. I was absolutely floored and definitely creeped out. A little mad on behalf of my partner and told her I'm sorry that happened. And that's definitely not okay in my opinion. She said she mentioned it being uncomfortable to other players in the group, but everyone was basically just like, oh, that's just how DM is. And she was still having fun in games, so she stayed. Yeah, you know what would really make it even better? You know what would make the campaign even better? Without a creepy DM. Finding a different DM that is just not gonna run any of this creepy stuff. Or it's gonna run it with consent of players. If they want the sort of themes, if they want to have some weird sexy themes and stuff like that, if they consent to it, if they want to, if they agree to this thing in the first place, and they're cool with it. Because this is creepy and gross, this is terrible. My partner told him she can't do the art and won't play in games with him anymore. Said his behavior made her uncomfortable. And GM said, I'm sorry I made you feel that way. The group seemed to have a good response and reached out to her individually to ask what happened. But then pretty much all of them made excuses for GM, using all the basic victim blaming phrases like, that's just how GM is. GM's never been like that with me, and give him the benefit of the doubt. On top of that, they're all trying to get her to keep playing the games, saying things like, but what about the audience, and you just don't have to talk to GM. Nobody ever mentioned how they would address his behavior, placing him as a GM, making him take a time out, or even the bare minimum of having him take a harassment course on YouTube, just excusing his behavior and gaslighting her because the show must go on and his show gets views. Regardless if someone's show gets views, no. Don't be okay with that sort of thing. Don't be okay with that sort of behavior. Stand up for yourself and tell people that need to fuck off to fuck right off. Don't let bad actors get away. Call them out whenever stuff like that happens. Problem DMs, problem players, whoever. Cloud, no cloud, views, no views, doesn't matter. If it's problem behavior, you need to call that stuff out. And for anybody that defends people that do this sort of bad behavior with excuses and stuff, or like, he wasn't like that with me. He didn't do that to me. He's not that bad. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Your experience doesn't invalidate the person, the OP's girlfriend's experience with this sort of situation, because clearly there's clips of that sort of thing, there's evidence and clips of that sort of thing, compile it together, make a, I don't know, make a twit longer about it or something, I don't care. But either way, call this stuff out, and don't put yourself in a position where you're gonna be manipulated by these sort of terrible people, terrible problem DMs like this guy. Sadly, my partner started feeling weird about everyone and just left the group. I thought that was the end of it, but it turns out GM's response to this was even weirder. My partner found out later that, after she left the all-female game, GM reached out immediately to another female player, asking her to take over her character, like within minutes of this apology. They had a call to discuss after my partner left the group. They had a call to discuss after my partner left the group, and GM said, None of it is that bad. I bet other female player wouldn't have problem with it. Other female player absolutely had a problem with it. Since some of these things happened a while ago, people said she should have brought them up sooner because now it's too late. Like, what the hell? It really sucks that this stuff gets enabled. I never seen creepy GMs doing it in public for an audience, and it really sucks that people she thought were her friends all rallied around him like Ashton Kutcher and Mia Kunis for the Masterson guy. I'm sad for my partner that she lost a couple of characters that she really liked, a group she thought was her friends, and that her safety and comfort was sacrificed for viewers. Luckily she's working on her own games now and will probably play with new groups. 
asked if it was okay for me to share this and she said as long as things are anonymous. Well, I'm glad that she is doing better. Also, as a reminder, you can still take the characters to any way you want. Take the character that you worked so hard onto, that you helped cultivate, and just like save the PDL for the general concept for them and just take it to a different game. Make it your character. It's your character after all. You should be allowed to do whatever you want with your character. My wrist just snapped in a real way. It's your character anyway. Take it to whatever adventure you want. It's your character. Do whatever you want with them. And even if you don't have the character sheet for them, like you weren't able to save it or something, you could still take the general concept and idea for the character and just remake it into your own image. Continue the character however you want. It's your character after all. Do whatever you want to do. And with that, that's going to be all our stories for today. I want to thank you very much for watching and thanks so much for being here. If you like what I do, consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. Also, if the RPG horror stories ever goes down or if you want to submit your own personalized horror story, email is down in the description below. I'll see you again in more Tales tomorrow. Bye-bye.